my book, The Judge T. Chronicles. My name is Todd Jackson. I'm just going to start at the beginning and do the whole thing. It'll be about an hour. I think we'll enjoy it. Volume 1, The Judge and I. The alley entrance leads down a dim hallway. An old drunk leans against a wall, staring at nothing. The Judge and I pass the Santa Anita old timer in the bathrooms and enter a dark, smoky bar filled with gray hairs. The stools are worn. I get a beer. The judge orders wine. They'll let me drink wine, he says. Wine's okay. The judge had some sort of a seizure last Thursday. Spent the weekend in the Queen of Something's hospital. I stopped by the hotel where he lives on Friday. I was concerned. The judge likes to call me his aborted son. Little incident back when he was starting quarterback at Cornell. <laughs> Christ, I tell him. I thought I was knocking on the door of a dead man. He offers no apology, just laughs. I chuckle too, aborted son. I consider it a compliment from the judge. He claims he's accepted original sin, so he's nice to have around. He buys two more and we smoke cigarettes. I ask him if he knows much about wine. He goes on about grapes, glaciers, New York, and the sand around Lake Erie, then remembers something awful he did back then and begins to tell me. The old drunk from the back, <clears throat> excuse me, the old drunk from the back rests his elbows on the bar. His palms slide the skin up his face. He sighs and says, Oh God, I'm depressed and I don't know why. <laughs> Next to him is another old drunk, cigarette in his mouth, a beer, a glass, an ashtray, and two bottles of prescriptions on the bar in front of him. He can't help. I look around, nobody in here is worth a shit. It's Tuesday morning and the bar is waiting to die. They're reading the paper, waiting for the track to open, and chain smoking regardless of California law. The judge finishes his traumatic story about fucking his girlfriend's best friend in a vineyard in Ithaca. Just ripped off her pants and he throws his hands in the air. The left one is swollen from the IV he yanked out on Sunday. We both light another. The judge looks into his stemmed, pussy glass of wine and administers internal punishment for something he did 30 years ago. A Celtics game from the 80s is on the TV in the corner. Their green shorts are uncomfortably short. I turn away before I see Nutsack. I'm depressed and I don't know why. The old guy's words repeat in my head, you are old man, what about me? I'm 29 years old, sitting here next to you guys, turning dead instead of 30. Something about this morning reminds me of betting on the muse. I think of the judge's girlfriends, hookers, low-rent bartenders, ugly. No, we're all ugly. Hard luck lesbians who suck his dick for drug money. Karaoke singers who wind up in jail. The female dregs of society. The judge slams his wine and says, ready? It's not yet noon on a Tuesday and we're leaving. The judge can't drink scotch, we're out of cigarettes and I intend to sell more books today. Volume two, Purple Baby Guilt. Woke up this morning, dry heaved until a blood vessel under my eye broke. Didn't go to work, didn't go back to bed, didn't even write. Just sat alone and wished I hadn't gone out with the judge last night. We tried to drink away the judge's memories for him, for he never could, and now I never can. He's been dealing with some shit lately. It was triggered at a bar in downtown LA. He walked in on five kill minimum night. Guys friendly with death telling stories. Most of them had served. How about you, the bartender asked. I dropped napalm and nom. The bar went silent, except the bartender. He said, that counts as six, and poured another double scotch, rocks, on the house. It's a fucked up thing, these guys like John. They were jet, jet pilots in the Air Force, captains, elite members of the military. I say they were, because they're dying. The judge is old and not yet 50. Napalm is all about the side effects, but the one they leave out most often is guilt. Years passing hasn't helped, and now booze, the only thing that makes him feel better, is killing him. I'll read 
one more. So I worked with the guy, and then I didn't work with the guy, and this is, and then I worked with him again, and this is while I, I left the job to go write the great American novel, <clears throat> and then unemployment ran out and I had to go back. This is one of the times I hung out with him while we weren't working together. Volume 11, Up the Stairs. You were the best I ever saw. Not anymore, Judge. Now I'm just happy if someone gives me $10 for a book. We're in his hotel room. The dirty plastic glasses are half filled with J&B. He's on the bed, waxing nostalgic about the days we used to work together. I had to cut him off. I don't want to think about the capitalistic, addictive person I once was, smoking weed to forget my job immediately upon leaving, and drinking when that didn't work. He's lapsed onto an elbow. One of his legs is bent in front of him. The other's toes are resting on the floor. I had to carry him up the stairs. He wouldn't take the elevator. The doc says it's good for my knees. I know he doesn't want to be seen by the people at the front desk in this condition. He's staring at me. What are you looking at? I yell and leap from my chair, making like I'm going to bust his head open with my piece of shit whiskey glass. He doesn't flinch. Instead, he raises his drink to the best damn engineer I ever saw. For some reason, there is nothing more insulting he could say to me this evening. I fake a sip. The last one almost came up and lecture him while I'm still standing. I've told you before, just because you're good at something doesn't mean you have to do it. For instance, you have a grand ability to drink, but what's that going to do for you in the end? I typically wouldn't bring it up, but he is loaded, and he lives on the third fucking floor. I can still feel his hand clenching my shoulder as I hauled all 250 pounds of his useless ass up the hotel's back stairs. He doesn't talk when you mention drinking. He drinks. Yeah, I pissed him off. So what? You didn't see me bringing up Nam or his ex-wife, did you? That last job nearly undid me. Towards the end, I had an epiphany. What I did every day did not make me proud. Once I quit, I discovered it never had. I walked away from the career rising in front of me like a spiral staircase and refused to look back, even at him. The judge is crying. It's quiet, no whimpering, no pestering tears, just the release of internal floods. He's lost inside himself, and I don't want to go there tonight, even if it's my fault. I slam my drink, I'm out of here, and I leave. Down the stairs to my car. Don't worry about me, I'll be fine. I'm the best engineer he's ever seen, and I know the way home, drunk or sober. It used to be my commute. <laughs>